Welcome on, everyone. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. We are looking right now at the S&P 500, and we've got a big-time update for us before the biggest catalyst, I think, of this next week. For sure, of this next week, looms, looms on Tuesday, Valentine's Day. So here we are in the S&P 500. We actually had a green day to finish off the week on Friday after gapping down, opening below the prior day's close, and then kind of grinding back and finishing somewhat strong here on SPX, the S&P 500. So we draw this little zone right here. You'll find that this was an area that was a prior resistance and now is acting as a potential support going into CPI. Wouldn't be surprised if we get a very choppy day going into CPI as everyone's waiting for CPI on Tuesday. So Monday might not be too much crazy price action. Wouldn't be surprised. And we'll have our, up, our next update most likely after the CPI report to see how the market reacts to that. So like always, we're going to dive right into it. Any links, resources down below. The first thing or the one thing we'll mention is TradingView, the platform that we use, TradingView. This is the charting platform. We will leave that linked up in the video pins, comment, and description box if you want to follow along on your own charts. A lot of customizations that you can follow up or really make, make your own at the end of the day. So a couple of indicators that we've been using, the 200 moving average in orange and the 50 moving average here on the one-year, one-day chart in blue. Just confirmed a nice bullish cross, golden cross, if you will. Again, that just means that short-term price action has been solid or has been moving up and long-term price action um, is still technically downtrending, although we're breaking that downtrend now or it's been weaker. But of course, that makes sense based off the bigger picture patterns. Well, let's start with the catalyst, okay? So our catalyst is going to be CPI. The current expectations for CPI year over year, headline 6.2%, okay? Core CPI year over year is expected to come in at 52 okay? And the CPI for this month is, is expected to come in at 0.4%. And the core CPI for the month, or I guess last month, month of January, is expected at 0.3%, okay? These are the expectations going into this next CPI, which again is on February 14th for the month of January. It's about a two-week delay or so. And here is the current trajectory of how CPI has played out the past year. We are clearly down trending now. So Powell no longer, uh, he used to, you know, a few months ago, be like, hey, yeah, we haven't seen a clear downtrend. Well, now you can't say that in CPI. And to be honest, Powell has, you know, not necessarily backed off from the hawkish tone, but it's no longer scaring the market. And uh, as it makes sense, we're getting some good action or we're getting some good results in the CPI. It took a little longer than they thought. Um, and, you know, at some point, right, they can kind of cool off their approach, right? And that's the idea. And that's what the market's trying to figure out when, when, how much, and pricing that all in. And as of right now, market's pricing in, I believe, about two more rate hikes uh, to the degree of about 25 basis points. But again, that probably changes off CPI. The next FOMC meeting is not until, I believe, late March, mid to late March. Uh, so plenty of time over a month to go until that meeting. A lot of data to come out, jobs reports, CPIs, actually two CPIs, before the Fed has to make their next call on rates, which most likely is probably going to be a 25 unless we get a hot CPI. So you can pretty much bake in a 25 uh, unless CPI, I guess, came in super low the next two months and surprised. But um, we'll see where we are, right? Again, we talked about how we are lapping over some big numbers. Again, we've talked about that for a while. But again, that's you know helping the pressure of CPI to the downside when we are now comparing this past year to you know a year of increases that was already 7.5%. When we're comparing this past year, it becomes harder and harder to surprise to the upside on CPI, given uh, what we're already seeing in the economy, given some layoffs, given that we're actually seeing on those jobs reports, what we're actually seeing under the surface is that people are getting more of those lower paying jobs and people are getting laid off from their higher paying jobs. Look around financial news outlets and you will see a lot of layoff news the past couple of weeks, a lot of layoffs, 20% here this company 5% there, this company restructuring, all these different things you know, are leading to people having to pick up additional jobs to pay the bills. And again, job market for now is okay. It looks okay because of things like that. But under the surface, it's actually a bit weaker, the job market, than it might seem. Okay. And the Fed knows that. The Fed's not dumb. The Fed knows that for sure. But again, does the Fed want to come out and say that we're screwed because of this, this, and this? No. They're not going to sound the alarm bells, okay? They're not going to do that. 
uh, at least as of right now. So again, here's the consensus view, 6.2% last month, or I guess the month of December was a 6.5. To be honest, 6.2, just from like the naked eye approach, obviously we know that there are things that have been going up the past month or so. Uh, we can see that gas went up a little bit. Uh, it's come back, but it's it was up for the month of January, a decent chunk from where it was. Used car prices have actually bounced back a little bit. They were down a couple months in a row. They've come back a little bit. That market seemingly getting a little bit of a resurgence. Maybe it's just the beginning of the year, or maybe there's you know some bigger story there. We'll have to see how that plays out as time goes on. So it's possible that this number doesn't come down too much. It's also possible that you know maybe we come in with a six or six point one. You know, and the market's like, oh wow, it's you know surprising lower, and that would be a good look, I guess, for Powell and from the Fed and for the overall market perspective and for the thoughts on. <clears throat> a soft landing. Now, we've talked about that, and that's the narrative, the soft landing narrative. Now, how does that make sense? Why is that narrative, and how does that narrative continue to potentially benefit the overall market to go higher? What's the bull case here? It's probably that soft landing narrative. And that soft landing narrative is job market stays strong, CPI comes down, Fed gets the job done, doesn't have to hike too much more, and the economy doesn't get crushed. That's essentially the soft landing narrative. The economy can weather the storm of these hikes, we're okay. We don't see major problems. We have some layoffs. We have some things here and there, but ultimately we can come out on top and the market prices it in and the market says, Hey, we can look over the, we can look over the end of this and maybe starts trending back to the upside over the coming months and into the rest of the year. That's a soft landing approach. The narrative again, could we get that narrative to run for three to six months? Maybe, maybe more, maybe a little bit less, right? Could that run for a bit? ultimately to be proven wrong? Yeah, yeah, sure. So that's the, that's the upside case here. And obviously, you know, a lot of people have gotten very pointed on their arguments of we have to go down the S&P, the, the VIX hasn't hasn't spiked to the 40 or whatever. All these things, sure. Sure, hear me out, right? I, I agree. I make sense. I get it. But if price action continues to trend higher, and this is the narrative at play, you know, do you want to be fighting that narrative in the short term? Probably not because it could go higher. And the potential for a squeeze out is certainly there. It's been, we've had days, we've had weeks. But again, think about this. Cash on the sideline, bearish positions, people going from bearish to bullish, cash going from sitting cash to back into stocks. If, you know, the conditions potentially warrant it or managers are like, hey, I want to cap, I can't miss out on this move. You know, that could keep pushing things in the short term, right? And so again, that could squeeze people out and the squeeze can be bigger than some may think. Um, especially with, you know, the leverage and the option markets, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of things at play here. Okay. What just happened in rents? Why is this, a, this is an important piece? Cause it's actually a really big piece of CPI. Rents rose 2% in January, the smallest increase in 20 months. This is one of the biggest pieces to the CPI that will be affecting things over the next six plus months. As we start to see rents really rolling over and start to decline, but or not decline, but slow down substantially in terms of their rate of increase, dare we say decline at some point this year, this is where we're going to see some big impacts in the CPI because the housing sector or the housing component of the CPI is huge. If you look into the CPI numbers, you'll notice that actually, when you look at things like used cars and trucks, like, yes, those were up this past month of January, but the weight that that has on the CPI is not as substantial as something like rents or housing prices. Those impacts are so much larger on the CPI. Okay. So here's that chart of rents. Look at rents. Like this, again, this number to the upside is all positive. So rents have been positive from essentially like two or three years ago. They've been going up now to varying degrees and they really catapulted to the upside the second half of 2021. We're obviously coming back substantially. This looks like it could be on pace to go negative very soon. Dare we say, probably by the second half of this year, based off this trajectory, maybe even sooner. So this is also going to be another massive piece, a massive piece to the puzzle of the CPI and a big time help to get this number down. Now, again, does a CPI coming down, dare we say, towards that 2% target the Fed wants, does that mean that the market has to go up and, then, and that the bear case is screwed? Absolutely not. Because a CPI, dare we say, could even go negative at some point. But what that actually might mean is more problems, major problems for company earnings. There could be some major layoffs in the process. There's probably going to be a lot bigger of, of, of an issue going on if that occurs, 
right? So it's not, so again, it just, it's not like an argument sitting here saying, oh, this is going to be great for the stock market. It actually might be in the short term, but bigger picture, this could cause more problems. And we can't see that yet because we don't know. Like we're not there. Like we're not there. If we're sitting here at 2% CPI and we're like, wait, we're going to overshoot this like way past that 2% target. That's a concern, but we don't know until we get closer to 2%, right? So there's no way to know, right? And until we start getting closer and closer and go, wait a second, guys. Um, yeah, the Fed hikes are really impacting the market. It just took an extra eight, nine, 10 months to, to really see that. Yeah, we over tightened. Like that's a potential possibility. But again, that could take time. We can't see that just yet. People can make their assumptions. They can make their guesses or they can say, hey, this is why present their case. But has it been has not been proven yet, and I, you know, unfortunately, we don't have that crystal ball. So keep this in mind. A big piece of the CPIs um, getting some big help, really nice help uh, in terms of to the downside with rents coming down, uh, and that should be a, a good thing for those of you uh, who, like myself, rent an apartment or rent a house or something like that. Um, you know, you're looking, you know, like maybe your rent's not going to be skyrocketing next uh, next time your lease is up. So hopefully that's helpful to you. But big picture, that's our look. Let's cover a couple different stocks. Uh, I want to cover our our friend Tesla. It got above that 200, then it fell right back below. It's still looking strong, but there is some weakness here for sure. Volume is still exceptionally high. This is a key spot. You know, if Tesla starts to confirm down here, not a great look. If CPI is weak and the market reacts in a bad way, Tesla back down towards the 170, upper 160s area is our target of downside, as it was a prior support area that we've been watching in the past. So we're watching that spot on Tesla if we do break down after CPI. Couple other names, CVNA, I met, I, this, this stock got mentioned, it's been getting mentioned a lot. Here's a concern with Carvana. They're in a tough financial position, okay? So we mostly talk technicals, no you know BS, and we just talk the charts here, right? So I don't want to kind of skew you here in any in any way. Uh, but if Carvana doesn't take advantage of this recent run with an offering from a fundamental approach, they're probably going to be in trouble, right? So does this mean the stock has to go down? No, because it could squeeze out to the upside. But let's talk about the bear case and the bull case here. Here's the bear case. Bunch of upper wicks. What is this a signal of? Now, the stock is down from highs, from recent highs, up near 20 bucks. It's down about 50, almost 50%. Down almost 50%. As a stock gets crushed like that, okay, and you have people who, and big upper wicks, tells you that there were people who were buying this thing, people who thought we could squeeze higher and go. It did not. Now these people potentially become bag holders, people who are now holding shares at an average price way higher than the stock price down, you know, dare we say 25, 30, 40% potentially on their position. So any pop you get, they're the first ones to sell. If they're averaging down and whatnot, I got to get out. I'm taking my loss here. Boom, gun, done. That's what the mindset or the psychology at play is acting. Been there, done that. I'm sure a lot of us have been there and done that with a lot of other stocks in the past, okay? On top of that, if the company is going to uh, raise capital and is going to potentially end up issuing more shares, diluting shareholders, that's a negative on the price. Now, of course, again, it makes it harder to squeeze the stock higher as there's more shares available to trade. And they got an earnings coming up. So there's a lot of concerns coming up with a stock like Carvana. Now, of course, used car prices have bounced back the past like month and a half, month, two months or so. So this could be maybe better than expected. However, how much of this price that in and is it excessive? So that is a concern coming up with Carvana. Keep an eye on this one if you are trading it or watching it closely or potentially in it. Um, there's room, you know, next spot to watch, to be honest with you guys. I mean, I'm looking down here you know, down towards eight, 825 would be the prior resistance now turning support. So could come down, you know, another two plus dollars to that next level. Uh, if it gets back up over $14 right up in here, this zone of consolidation, that would be really nice. So build back up over there and then we can squeeze out. But until then, if not, this is looking like it wants to come to eight and dare we say more. And it could pull, you know, something like a BBBY, a Bed Bath & Beyond where it has a big pump and then it has a big drop. Just be careful of an offering. Be careful of, of uh, dilution here. It's, it's a concern to watch on Carvana. Okay. With that said, I want to wrap things up. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way, shape, or form. If you got something out of it, hit the thumbs up button. Consider subscribing and check out TradingView if you guys have not done so already. If you want to follow along, build out your watch list, chart your own stocks, free plans, paid plans, 
30-day free trials. I and mean, we use the premium version, the highest paid version, because we love it and we use it every single day. Thanks so much for watching. Leave any stocks you want us to cover in the future down in the comment section down below. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.